Boone from Friends and Foul TV. I'm over here at Nick's house today and we're going to talk about reloading. Okay, when you first start reloading, the first thing that you need to do is get a, a reloader. There's a lot of different brands out there. We like the Mech 600 Junior. You can get them used, pretty inexpensive. There's also uh, Pons and Warren, a bunch of different uh, brands. You can spend as much as you want on your reloader. Then what you need to do is you need to go out and get a, a manual. Uh, we use the status of steel or there's the Lyman that everybody gets you to. Uh, the status of steel is going to focus just on steel. So if you're doing duck hunting, this is the one that you want to get. And then when you go through there, think about the holes that you, or the shells that you shoot now. And th those would be the shells maybe that you want to reload. The different kinds of shells that they have out there, they have these Rios, which um, crimp pretty well. Those are really pretty nice. They have the Remingtons. We like to buy these, the once fired Remingtons. They crimp really nicely, load really good. You can buy brand new holes from uh, Ballistic Products. They have a bunch of those that are already primered. Or the Fiocchis, which are really good. Or you can just pick up shells that you find when you're out hunting. The Kents are what's called a Shadit hull, which are the same as these ones. They are everywhere and pick them up if they're in good shape and you can reload them, they reload just fine. Okay, so now we're gonna have Nick talk a little bit about, more about reloading and we'll reload for you. Hey, my name is Nick. Um, we'll talk today about the uh, Mech 600 Junior and what uh, Boone and I have done to uh, get started into uh, reloading still shot for, for duck and goose hunting. Um, we both bought used Mech 600 Juniors for pretty good price and I think it was 30 bucks I think all we spent for the for the, the setup but we had to do quite a bit to it to uh, get it to reload steel um, we had to buy a few components to get it started you can probably see a, a few of them right here um, what I have on my mech 600 I have a powder baffle this helps with the alliance steel because still the steel is such a, a wafered and large bulky powder that it um, you, you might have noticed Boone tapping the the tap in his powder bottle. You don't have to do that with the powder baffle. Another thing I have, um, because I do switch between powders, is I, I don't use the shot bar, the normal shot bar where you got to buy the the uh, the bars. I use a, an adjustable one, so you can. Uh, I don't want to get it to drop any shot, but you can adjust your powder with the turn of the knob and get it right down, and then weigh it each time, and you can adjust your your shot as well. So, so you don't have to worry about the bars. Um, another thing that we had to upgrade, have to upgrade that, right, for the longer one? Yeah, we, we bought a conversion to make it so that you don't have to change it. Oh, between. yeah, change it each time, every time you uh, resize, deprime. One thing I have extra on here is the uh, this crimper. It really works well for new holes, brand new holes. Works pretty well. It works a little bit better than the plastic one or the, the metal crown looking one that comes with it um, it's on standard that's a pretty good deal that's sharp really sharp where did you get that one at got that at ballistic products most everything I bought was at ballistic products I know you can buy this at uh, other places too the, the shop bar and the conversion kit you can get them at other places but ballistic products seem to have all that stuff the other thing you need is this drop tube you get a steel drop tube and it's not tapered at the bottom that way your pellets fall straight down and there's no uh, backing up inside the tube. Yeah, they'll get stuck in there and then you'll you'll, you'll look down into your, your wad and you'll only see, uh, you know, maybe an ounce and there's an eighth of an ounce stuck up in there because these are these are bulkier, especially the bigger the bigger shots. We're gonna reload uh, number twos, some number two shells today. On your recipes, when you look at your recipes, you'll see the uh, different primers you use. I normally, I buy uh, the Federal 209 Oh, there they are, upside down. Federal 209 primers for my uh, American made holes, Remingtons, uh, Federals, um, and Fiocchis. I put in all the uh, foreign Shadits or Fiocchis. Um, and they either one of those do pretty well. You can you should be able to find those at any store, any sporting goods store you, uh, you have locally. Let's get started and go over a few uh, reloading tips and tricks that we have. Um, like he said, we like to reload the uh, Remington three inch hole. It seems to do a good job. Um, and we're going to put a uh, Federal 209 primer in it. So first we got to knock the old primer out and resize it. 
we put it in there, resize it. And I always check the, uh, this has been, this has been shot probably three times. Make sure there's no cracks or anything in it and that the, uh, the top looks pretty good. That one's not too bad. That one will reload all right. You seat the, the primer, make sure it's in there pretty good. You put it down for the, uh, the powder. You put the powder and shot in. Uh, we've already measured it out. We're doing 40 grains of powder. Put it down in there. Make sure it goes in. Lift it up. We're using a SAM 1 wad, SAM 1 3 inch wad today. Now there's some interesting things with that. It's such a long, longer wad, you gotta kinda seat, seat the different pieces and make sure it gets down in there. And then the, the BBs do kinda get stuck, so you kinda gotta play with it. And then we uh, put a felt spacer over the top. And then this with this crown crimp, you gotta get, get it close to the last crimp. All right, so I just started the crimp. You see those nice, nice sharp points? That'll be a good crimp. We'll go to the finishing station. Come down. There you go. All right, we're gonna reload a brand new Shadit hull. Um, so it's coming already primed, and we don't have to resize it, obviously, because it's brand new. So we'll just start with the powder and the shot. Put our Alliance still in there. And we grab a PT-1265 wad. That's what we're going to use in here. That's what the recipe calls for. They're a little tricky to get on to the 1265. Sometimes that shot does get stuck in that uh, in there. The bar. And you have to just wiggle it a little bit. Okay, so we just reloaded the shitty. And uh, we'll show you what's going on in here. So when you look at this, you can kind of see where the powder is just above that brass rim. And then our hull, our wads in there are shot. And then you can see that felt spacer right up on top there. That's the components of a shell right there. Looks pretty nice. And it'll shoot really good. Well, I want to make sure that I know what I'm shooting. So I always take a magic marker and just write a two on it. The other trick that's kind of a good thing to do, if you'd only load a couple types of loads, um, I will take a marker and I will color in my primer uh, so yeah, that when I punch that primer out, um, you get rid of that color and you can put a different kind of load in there. And you'll know by the colors which load you have in there. One thing that you really, you got to realize that when you reload with different hulls, each hull has a different size. And so there's different capacity. So make sure that when you use the recipe that you want, that you're using all the components that it says in that recipe, because they will be different size and different requirements. And the different requirements will create different pressure. And if you don't do it right, you can create some unsafe pressure. Okay, so most of the things that we use, we buy some stuff from Precision Reloading and Ballistic Products. And we also use uh, Bucks Run to get some of our products. Those are three really good reloading places that you can start with. And they all have parts, or ballistic products and precision reloading have parts for the mech. You can buy every part down to every single screw in these mechs. And the mech really hasn't changed a lot throughout um, the last 30 years. This is an 82 model, and the brand new ones look exactly the same. In a couple weeks, we'll do a youth hunt. We'll have some films from that. And then again, in three weeks, we're going to go to Alberta, Canada, and we'll film some early season duck and goose hunting.